Okay, so to build the framework for a flexible UI, we'll need to write a couple of custom scripts. We'll need to write a flexible UI data scriptable object, which will hold all of the data for our UI layout. We'll need to write a base flexible UI class. This will be a base class that holds abstract methods our scripts will extend, and will control the overarching behavior of our UI system. We'll then write a flexible UI button class, which we will add to the default UI button. This class will derive from our flexible UI base class and will be used to skin and control the behavior of our button. Finally, we'll write a static flexible UI menu class, which will simply hold a list of all the prefabs in our flexible UI so they can be easily accessed and instantiated in the create menu. So let's get started by heading into the project and creating a new script. Let's call this flexible UI data and we'll open the script up. Then let's clear this and we'll inherit from scriptable object like so. And above the declaration, we'll write create asset menu, menu name equals flexible UI data. This will allow us to create a new instance of the skin data from the create menu in our project. So if we head back to Unity and uh, we now right click, we can see the new flexible UI data element. Let's make a new folder and we'll call it data. And then let's create one of those and pop them in there. And we'll simply just call this the default skin. Right now, it's just an empty scriptable object with no variables defined. Later, we'll have it hold data about how each UI element will look, but we just need to create it first so that we can write the next script that will use it. You might be asking why not store each individual skin element as its own scriptable object. And although we could do this, keeping all of the behavioral data in one single scriptable object asset means that we can hot swap the entire skin of the project with another scriptable object. Whereas if we were using separate scriptable objects on individual UI elements, it would require a lot more work to swap them out. So it can be done. And in some use cases, this might be more efficient. We're just using one for simplicity in this demo. So let's create another script and call it flexible UI. And then let's open this up. Okay, so let's clear this and let's create a reference to the scriptable object. So everything that inherits it will have access to a scriptable object. We'll then create a virtual method, protected virtual void on skin UI. And this will be the inherited method that our UI elements will be able to derive from and will uh, dictate how the UI is going to be skinned. And so we just need to make sure that this is then called uh, when the game's running, whenever the UI element is awake. So we create another virtual method for the awake phase of the mono behavior. Ideally, I'd also like to visualize our changes without having to play the scene every time. So at the declaration, let's also add execute in edit mode tag. This will mean that the script will execute in edit mode. And then we'll create a virtual method for the update if application dot is editor on skin UI. Now Unity will check if we're in edit mode and update the skin of our UI elements while we're working on them. The most optimal way to do this would be to write a custom editor script to call the update method so that when the game is running, we're not doing this check, but for the purposes of this demo, it's fine. So that's the basic part of the framework for our system set up. We've got a scriptable object ready to have some data added and a base class to hold the data and process behavior. So with that, let's get started making a custom component.